So welcome to our artist chat and today I'm joined by Louise, Naomi, Lucy, James and Simone and we're going to speak a little bit about our careers and also about our training and we're going to relate that back to young people and some advice that we can bring to you today. So how are we all doing firstly? Are we all all right? Yeah, great. Everyone, yeah, we all yeah. okay. Good, Happy good, good. Okay. Um, brilliant. So if we could, just very quickly, could you just introduce yourself and just tell us a tiny bit about yourselves, uh, starting with Louise. Hello, I'm Louise. I'm a ballet teacher and I'm a choreographer. I'm also a rehearsal director and sometimes I, I'm a company manager as well. <laughs> so I do all sorts of things. I don't perform anymore. I used to dance for the Royal Swedish Ballet and Norwegian National Ballet and I even danced with ENV back in the day. Um, but now I freelance with various different companies and vocational schools. And yeah, that's me. Happy to be Lovely. here. Lovely. Thank you, Louise. And Naomi, tell us about yourself. Hi, yes, I'm Naomi. Um, I'm from Hull. I've been based in London for the first 12 years of my career. Um, and now I'm living in Brussels. And um, I was performing in the UK. Here in Brussels, I'm doing um, a variety of uh, teaching and community dance projects. And I'm still connected to the UK as well doing that. Lovely. OK. And Lucy? Hi, um, yeah, I teach uh, Pilates and ballet and I've been teaching at EMB um, since about, I think, 2014 and still performing on and off um, as a freelancer. Lovely, thank you. And then I'm going to come to James and Simone. And Simone, we haven't seen this week, but you've worked with, um, with us before in our youth dance capacity, haven't you? Because you taught on our summer intensive last year and you've done a, a, other bits of teaching with us too. So just uh, maybe start with James and then we'll have a little chat from Simone as well. So James, tell us about yourself. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I stopped uh, dancing a few years ago and now I'm ma mainly focused on teaching. So I'm freelance teaching all around London and also outside of London. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's me really. That's good, and Simone. Uh, hi everyone, uh, you all kind of know me anyways, but originally from Denmark, trained Royal Danish Ballet School, currently dancing rumba, doing a little bit of teaching, choreography, mostly like uh, managing the playground as well, so yeah. Uh -huh. And hopefully we'll hear a little bit more about the playground a bit later on. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Richard, um, I'm the creative director of EMB Youth Co. Um, I'm also a teacher, so I teach vocationally and some company classes as well. I'm also a choreographer and I do occasionally get on stage and perform still. So that's, that's me in a nutshell. Right, so we've got a few questions and hopefully we'll get through most of them. And, and if not, I will sort of direct us through so we can get through the best of it. So we get the real juicy questions make sure that we're giving the best advice to young people today. So first question, do you have any advice for your younger self knowing what you know now? And I'd like to direct that one to Naomi first. Okay, well, um, I was thinking about, uh, well, I've been thinking a lot about how, um, how you see things changes um, through the years and what things um, seem important or not important to you as time goes on. Um, and that could be to do with um, different dance styles or what you think hard work means or what you want to be as a person. Um, mm -hmm. So just, um, I would say to myself to stay open-minded. So look, you can't yeah. be everything and do everything all the time, but you can stay open to the fact that you, your, your ideas of things might change along the way and you never know what will be useful in a few years time. Marvellous. I mean, I think that's really key, a key here because I think your identity is kind of always changing. And I think when you're young, and especially when you're a teenager and you're sort of developing that self identity, it's a really kind of, it's a changeable time. But as you, as you develop as an artist and, and get older uh, and do more things, then I think you'll get more flexible with what you, what you, how you identify yourself. I think that's really important. So that sort of, that being flexible is really important uh, to that process. Um, anyone else got anything they'd like to say about that? I think maybe maybe Lucy, do you have anything you want to add? Um, yeah, I mean, I just wish perhaps I'd done a little bit more sort of strengthening training as a younger dancer. So um, since teaching Pilates and, and doing my Pilates teacher training, it actually really changed how I danced and for the better. And I wish um, I'd had some of that knowledge, uh, you know, 10 years ago. Um, so but I, I do think it's becoming part of, um, 
you know, vocational schools timetable now. They do high intensity training and Pilates and stuff like that. So it, it's it's great. I just yeah. wish we'd had it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that. I, I think it's hugely important. It's just like the older you get, and the more knowledgeable you get, it's you start to understand your body better and yeah. understand the route that you're going much better. Good. All right. I'm happy with that. Um, so I'm going to ask this question to Louise. Um, no, I'm not going to ask it to Lucy um, again. Was there a defining moment when you realised this was the career for you? And if anyone wants to chip in with this one as well, please feel free to chip in. So, Lucy, was there a defining moment? Uh, yeah, for me, it wasn't actually until I started working as a professional. I think um, at school, when I was training, I was quite a nervous dancer, had a lot of self-doubt. And then when I started actually working and performing, I think that's when the confidence grows and everyone likes to be good at what they do. And I felt like I was improving um, as a performer and as a dancer. And that's when I really started uh, to enjoy it and be like, I can't imagine not doing this. Yeah. So it's a bit later for me. Yeah. Um, Simone, how about you? I'd love to hear from you. Was there a defining moment for you? Or was it so early that you don't remember? Um, I think there wasn't really a defining moment. I think it's kind of backwards for me, more that I just knew I wanted to dance regardless. And I just kept um, thinking or like saying to myself, like the moment you don't want to do this anymore, you don't feel that it is right. Mm -hmm. Stop dancing. Um, yeah. Not a defining moment, just knowing that I really, really wanted to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Actually, Louise, we, we've had a chat before and you mentioned there's that, that, that saying that I think you've mentioned it before. What was it? When, when, when you can live without it, tell me what it is, I forget it. When uh, you, when you can live... Well, it's a little bit harsh. It's uh, if you can live I know, but I think, you, yeah. You <laughs> but I think um, I'm, 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 I'm assuming that everybody who's watching this is, is, is really, you know, they're into their dancing and they're, and they're really, they love it. And I think that's really, really important that we, if, we, if, you, if you love something, because that's kind of the flip side of that statement. If you really love something, then you, you really must pursue it. Um, you've got to find out exactly what it what it is for you. So I think that's quite quite a sort of prosaic kind of kind of work. Is that right? Is that the right word? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got yeah. So all right, I'd love to move on because we are quite short of time today, and there's lots of really interesting questions I'd like to to get us through. Um, I'm now going to direct this on to Louise. I want to ask you: Have there been been any inspiring moments? Or people on your journey and how's that affected you as a performer but also on a personal level what what has effect has that had for you Louise? Um, well I didn't really know that I wanted to teach um, when I was doing my dancing career I didn't really know anything about teaching but then I had some really inspiring teachers that I was working with um, two people in particular actually one was uh, the ballet mistress in Sweden um, she's called Eva Nissen and she just brought this wonderful atmosphere to the studio that was just, everyone was really, really working hard, but you could also laugh and feel relaxed, and, you know, but you didn't mess around either. And I, that balance was really, really inspiring to me. And that's something I try to channel in my own teaching now. And that got me really interested in teaching as well. And the other mm. person is um, Renato Peroni, who mm. works as a ballet master at ENB now. I met him about, 10 years ago at a time when I was really injured and I was really down and I just really needed some inspiration in my life and I met him and he helped me come back from my injury. He taught me a lot about um, kind of logical safe ballet technique which I think ties into what Lucy is saying you know I started to understand my body really well um, and to understand my technique and how to be safe with my injuries and stuff. And it was down to him that I had a dancing career and he taught me how to teach, which is now my bread and butter. So well, there you go. absolutely wonderful. Yeah, really inspiring. That's great. Okay. And Naomi, do you, is there any other inspiring moments or people in, in your career that you can uh, draw upon? Um, well, it makes me think of um, someone who's, well, she's a friend and I've worked with her, um, Claire Crowley. Mm -hmm. And I think she's someone who um, made me realise that there's no point um, putting yourself down or doubting yourself. Other things might do that for you. So you kind of need to be the one to go, okay, I can do it. It's, um, you know, taking, jumping to the deep end when you have to, um, so that you can move forward with your career. Um, yeah, and she actually also got me um, involved really in engagement, which is what we're, we've been doing this week. And um, so beyond performance, like how you can get 
people wouldn't normally go to the theatre to see dance. Um, and I think a lot of my performance career has actually been that, you know, performances for people outside the maybe normal dance world. Mm -hmm. And yeah, teaching and working with um, all kinds of different yeah, that's great. I mean, I think that's really important that we remember that the, the performance career is, is a big part of what we do and, it, and it's what we, we were sort of trained for. But then there's a whole world of, of, of work and engagement and opportunities out there that are linked to um, dance. I mean, we, we are all here working in a kind of engagement capacity. So we're teaching young people uh, and we are engaging with a wider community as possible through dance. Um, but I think it's really important to remember that there are so many different avenues that we can all go down when, when, we, when we start off on this journey. Good. All right. Let us ask this question. What, um, what are you missing at this time and how are you staying connected right now? I'd like to aim this one at James to start with. So what are you missing right now and how are you staying connected? Um, well, I mean, I suppose I should probably speak about this from a position of being a dance teacher. So. Sure. Um, I'm, I mean, I think we're all missing a lot of things at the moment. Um, I think, uh, well, actually, last in, in, last week I was teaching an uh, EMB uh, youth company. Yeah. So I've been very busy teaching online, uh, on Zoom, and, uh, and that's, been, that's been a really rewarding experience in some ways because you have to adapt so much to how you're delivering classes. Um, but I mean, missing, very much missing being in the studio, being connected with people, um, being able to look people in the eyes properly, and most of all, probably being able to move in space, because I love, I love to travel uh, in my classes, so that's something that's been a bit of a challenge. But yeah, no, it's been a really good experience, um, actually having to, to rethink things a little bit, and yeah. to getting back to some form of normality again soon. I think we've all like really upped our Zoom game recently, haven't we? Because I think are most of us teaching on Zoom or Instagram or something like that. We're all, we're all kind of connected through the screen now. We kind of got used to kind of looking at your face on a screen all day. It kind of becomes a strange normality. Would you agree, everyone? Yeah, I think so. So I don't know. I think maybe this is, even though this has been a really tr tricky time, especially for our industry, because it's so collaborative and connective, uh, but maybe this is going to be take things in a slightly new direction as we as we come out of this and and continue on our pathway whatever that is exactly we don't know um all right let's carry on because i'm really aware that we are short of time i want to get to some of the more juicy questions um all right so this is a tricky one and i think and Naomi, if you'd like to touch on this i hear your heart just pounding now why are you still here Naomi? this is what my favorite question uh why are you still here so to speak uh, what is it about this art form that keeps inspiring you and motivating you? If anyone else wants to chip in, please feel free. Well, I think it's quite hard to answer that without sounding cheesy, so I'm just going to go for please it. Please sound cheesy, I insist. In fact, I encourage it. <laughs> yeah. I think thinking about all the different kinds of um, jobs I've had, um, so performing, teaching, also uh, managing dance company, like the management side of things, like um, Louise said, um, it's that you know, a lot of people don't really have, connect with movement very much in their life, you know, in our, maybe in our society, I don't know. And when you see that it really adds to people's lives, um, I think that makes it worth doing. So you might be planning a class and feeling exhausted and thinking, why am I doing this? And then you get to the class, you see people come alive through being able to dance. Um, if it's somebody who's dancing for the first time or if it's someone who's like honing their technique or preparing for a show. Um, and just taking them that step further um, or it might be you taking it that step further for you always being able to move forward you know mm. finding something new in your own dancing um, something that clicks after 10 or 15 years and that thing keeps changing whatever it is that keeps us here is something that keeps changing uh, I mean for me uh, it, you know I still perform occasionally but it's it, I still get the thrill of the performance, but I think also just, just yeah, connecting with a group of people and uh, and having a kind of joint idea and a joint kind of goal, it, you just don't get it anywhere else. And I think that's why this industry is so powerful, but also why at this time we need to be really uh, kind of clever and savvy about how we stay connected and keep all the, the kind of creativity still going in what we're doing. Has anyone else got anything to chip into that one? Why are you uh, still here? Yeah, just a little yeah. something. Just, uh... 
along the same lines, but you know, uh, I work with a lot of young people and sometimes over many years, you know, so just seeing people develop through uh, something that you've had something to do with, you know, so if you teach someone from when they're 12 until they're 19, you, you really see them yeah. develop and that's just wonderful. And that really keeps you going when you're, when you're tired and, you know, yes. and it's, down. <laughs> it's really like, that's the thing that keeps me going for sure. That's great. All right, well, actually, I'm going to stick with Louise for this next question. And I'm going to ask, um, is it, can you tell us something about yourself that people may be surprised to hear? Well, when I was 18, I, uh, I had a very bad back injury. I was in full-time training, but I decided to stop that training because my back was just too bad to carry on at that time, which was, of course, heartbreaking. But the good thing was that I went off to university and did a degree in English literature. So I sort of stepped out of the dance world completely for three years, um, went into the world of university, and now I've got this degree. And actually, you know, I, with my choreography, I, I work with words an awful lot. So I think it has kind of stuck with me in a way. Um, yeah, so then I, I completely retrained, came back to dance after that, and then had a performing career after that. So that's something that maybe people don't know about me. Yeah, that's very interesting. Thank you. And I think also what that tells us is that as, as dancers, we're kind of, we have all these transferable skills. That's a phrase that we hear a lot. We have transferable skills that we can then apply to, to so many things, whether that's working uh, well, in English literature or, or in creative arts as other creative arts, or maybe you're good at coding. I don't know. But there are so many things that we could, you know, potentially be doing um, that, you know, kind of, it means that we're not just one trick pony. I think that's really important. Uh, James, Simone, anything, anything surprising about you guys? Uh, I think just that I am one out of eight kids in my family. <laughs> that, is, that is surprising. I was not expecting that. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's surprising. People don't know. Um, I, uh, just a few weeks ago, actually, I finished, I completed my studies for A-level history. <laughs> well, that is very good. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> very good. What are you going to do with that? I have no idea. <laughs> but a good choice. Very good choice. I always wanted to do it and I set myself a challenge when I stopped dancing to do this as well and hopefully it will come in useful somewhere at some point. Super. No, I think that's always good. I think education is always a super thing to do, invest in at any time. So, okay, let's move on because I am, again, I'm keenly aware that the time is drifting away. Lucy, I've got a question for you. Uh, what would you be if not a dance artist? So um, I think the only other industry that sort of brings me excitement uh, is the sort of costume world, um, working in wardrobe. And um, my experience is, you know, working with companies and performing and going for costume fittings um, and uh, being in the wardrobe department. I don't know, something really magical and um, it gets me really excited. Uh, I don't know whether I'd want to design costumes or be in construction, um, but there's definitely something about uh, the wardrobe department that, that excites yeah. me. Is it a similar thrill to, to performance? Is it, is, it, is it kind of tangibly linked or is it, what do you think? Mm, that's that's no. tricky. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think I would enjoy it. I think I would enjoy it. Okay, nice. Okay, I think if if I wasn't a dance artist, I'd like to like, I don't know, I'd like to run a hotel. That's what I think <laughs> I've always said. I'd love to have a, you know, a little boutique hotel somewhere and, and run Richard's that. Airbnb. Bit, exactly, but a little bit sl slightly more highbrow, hopefully. Uh, but again, I think that's <laughs> kind of there's a kind of theatre to that as well. I think you know in in service industry and stuff like that. So maybe maybe that's something you didn't know about me as well. That's a, Sort of link the two questions together. All right, we're going to wrap up quite soon. Um, have we got any advice for young dancers about training or types of training um, and options to continue that training in lockdown? And Lisi, maybe you've got something to talk about in terms of training and approaching training. Um, yeah. Um, so with regards to the age of sort of when you go to a vocational school or you start, um, you know, training to be a professional, um, I didn't go to Ron Bear until I was 19 which I think is considered quite late, especially for a female dancer. Um, I did my A-levels um, and then I took a gap year where I continued to train to sort of prepare for auditions and then um, got a place at Rombert. 
And so I just want to sort of let younger dancers know that if you're not ready at 16, whether that's physically or mentally, it doesn't have to be the end of your, your journey. Or perhaps you've gone and done auditions and you haven't got a place at school. It doesn't end there. You can continue, um, you know, audition the following year. There are options for older dancers. And, um, you know, I graduated when I was 21 and I worked with classical companies and I performed. And um, I think long term, if you're not ready at 16, you know, wait. Yeah. You can still do it. I think that's important because if you, if you, if you jump in too soon, you can, it can have a, a step back effect on you. So I think actually knowing yourself better is, a really, is really important when we go into this. I had a similar story. I actually went into training when I was 17 or 18. So I, a little bit later, usually it's usually it's 16 or earlier if you're going from uh, sort of 11. But I think having that extra time really helped me uh, to develop as a person before I became a uh, you know, developer as a dancer. So I think that's really important. It's quite hard to, to make a decision on, you know, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life at, 11 years old or 16 years yeah. old um yeah and i certainly wasn't ready to to make that commitment at that age oh yeah yeah okay very interesting and hopefully quite insightful for young dancers right now who are thinking about that and maybe even worrying about the fact that they may be running out of time because we're in lockdown and we're missing training and everything so i think a key quite key point is don't worry too much if you feel like you're missing your opportunity now has anyone got anything else to add to that Great, let's move on. I'm gonna move on to the last question. Okay, and that is, have we got any supportive words for young people at this time? And I expect this to be cheesy, okay? So mm -hmm. any, any supportive words that you wanna give out to, to young people right now? Um, Louise, have you got something? Mm, I think just, I mean, I, I know we're all saying it, but take it day by day, you know, yeah. try not to judge yourself. Like we had a conversation the other day about try not to judge yourself if you don't want to do a class at home one day it's yeah. okay you know okay. all of this stuff is out there and it's um you know it's there's loads of great resources available so really use all of that stuff that's there for you but also try not to judge yourself in your own yes. training at home it's a yeah. difficult time and it's just like lucy says it's you know you can don't panic <laughs> it's yeah it's gonna be okay we're all in the same position um i think yeah, I think kindness is the most important thing right now. And that's not just to other people, but it's to yourself. Please be kind to yourself. Because like, I think that the anxiety thinking that I'm missing an opportunity, I'm missing my moment now is, is can be quite destructive. Uh, we're in a, it, we've entered a new world now. So I feel like don't expect it to be the same thing as we left. And hopefully it will be improved or better or we've all learned a lot from it. Um, has anyone else got anything to add to that, just that point about um, some, just some supportive words maybe the young people. Well, I was just, um, well, it's a bit along the yeah, same yeah. lines, um, and it might not sound relevant now, but thinking about um, being a bit out of control of your dance training, which is probably how a lot of people are feeling now. So um, I have a 14 month old baby. Um, mm -hmm. Well, she's not really a baby anymore, but I'll call her a baby. Um, <laughs> and so I had a, did have a gap in being able to do classes. I mean, I was teaching up until quite late when I was pregnant, but then you do have this time when you can't really do dance. Um, but I think you do find that you'll, you'll find something new afterwards. So having a break can actually stop some of the patterns that were happening. You know, we're dancing every day and you're developing good patterns, but you might be developing things that, you know, you want to change. So just having a little break or something coming along and changing things can actually, yeah. um, you can start again and look at how you're dancing. Um, and feel how your body feels after that new experience and then go yeah yeah see it's how you feel after is... lockdown yeah enjoy yeah rediscover enjoy this change of change of pace i think is really yeah, yeah it's it's happening we can't change it and so enjoying that change of pace james did you have something to say it's a really good opportunity to also to look at other things uh, try new things that perhaps you haven't thought of before um as dancers i think you take get very tunnel visioned a lot of the time when you're in some form of dance training or whatever. It's very easy to get tunnel visioned. Um, it's a great, great opportunity to try new things. And also, and I, I think this is just a general thing that I always think is very important is try not to take yourself, yourself too seriously in what you do. Like, you know, work hard, do your best, but don't take yourself too seriously and you will get just fine yeah. with that. 
Yeah. What is it? Take the work seriously, but not yourself. I think yeah. that's, that's a classic. Yeah. yeah. Well, ladies and gents, on that wonderful note, I think we're going to we have to wrap this up today because we have run out of time. Uh, but I just want to thank Louise, Naomi, Lucy, James and our guest Simone as well uh, for joining us today for your brilliant words. I wish we had more, more. Ooh, I wish we had more time to discuss it. I'm still here. I wish we had more time to discuss things because it's been really, really interesting. Um, and hopefully we can keep this connection going, keep this connection through EMB Youth Dance. Um, and hopefully there'll be more wonderful things to come along the line this year. So thank you all very much and hope to see you again soon.